right, well welcome everybody. Uh, my name is Brandon Klump. I'm with Orthopedic Rehab Specialists and I have with me uh, Dawn Cuddy from the Grass Lake Roadrunners. She's going to be talking to us a little bit later about the importance of running in a community and how doing it as a group can really uh, kind of help empower and improve the experience. I've got Nick Stanko from Ann Arbor Running Company with us. He's going to be talking to us about the importance of proper equipment and the right fit. Uh, and I've got Brian Dahl from Orthopedic Rehab's Foot, Ankle, and Running Center. He's going to be talking to us, to us about recovering from injuries. So I think it's going to be a good, uh, good discussion and uh, we're looking forward to it. What I want to start off with is how do I know if I'm fit enough to run? Um, I've been doing this now for almost 20 years. Gosh, that doesn't sound right, but almost 20 years and so often I hear patients come in and, and say they got injured trying to run or they got injured and they can't really run anymore. And often, it, as we kind of go through the conversation, they got injured trying to get fit running. And most of the time, I've found that it's not that they can't run or they wouldn't have been successful, but when you, there's an entry, an entry level of fitness that you need to successfully take on running. Um, the statistics tell us that the large majority of runners get injured in their first six to nine months taking up running. And uh, during that time, you're, you're learning gait efficiencies, you're trying to build strength and endurance, and if you make the mistake of going too hard too early or pushing into speed when you shouldn't, yeah, you're going to break down. And even beyond that, if you come in with some pre-existing issues, it, that, that's when this becomes a problem. So when we look at the requirements of running, we look at three things. We look at do you have the mobility to run? Do you have enough range of motion in your ankles, your knees, your hips to run? Do you have enough stability to run? Do you have the, uh, the stability in those different segments to be able to, to tolerate the demands of running? And then lastly, do you have the power to run? Do you have the strength, power, and, and ability to propel yourself forward and do that? Um, you know, so if you start looking at those things, that's a hard question to ask. Like, how do you know when I'm ready? Uh, so if, if you're a novice runner, if you're somebody that's just thinking about, hey, I want to take better care of myself, I want to get active, it's a really good idea to have somebody take a look at just how you move, the quality of your movement, some general strength screens to see if you're really ready to start diving in and then to do a little bit of homework. Make sure that you have a plan when you get into it and you don't just start running to run. That, that's really where people get into the most trouble. Um, you know, there's lots of other factors that play into to, to why injuries happen, and it can be nutritional. You know, if you're not feeding your body in a way that it can tolerate the demands and uh, of the activity, then, then you're you're asking for problems. If you're not managing your stresses, if you're not getting enough rest, all those things can lead to breakdown. Um, so there's a lot of different things that you you might need to do to be ready to take up. A sport like running and there's lots of different levels of running that you that you could get involved in I mean it's a very different thing to run for fitness than it is to race and so you really need um, a team of professionals or people behind you to kind of help you kind of help you if you transition from casual running to racing or from nothing to casual running. Uh, so how do I know where, where you are? How do I know how to get started? Um, you need to work with a sports medicine professional, somebody that works with runners to kind of go through your background, your history, your training level and see where you fall into that and then how, help you develop a plan on how to get started and get started safely so you can be successful. All right, well, that's kind of the, the niche I wanted to take because in my career, what I've seen is so many people fail before they get started. And it, it's they didn't set up with the right entry point or the right plan. So, you know, that's kind of my take on getting into this. And certainly if 
you're somebody that is looking at can I get started, give us a call. We can figure out you know, if we need to have you in for a screening to see you know, what's the right step for you. I'm Dawn Cuddy. I'm the founder of Grass Lake Roadrunners um, here in Grass Lake, Michigan. Um, I was going to talk a little bit about um, running um, as a community, as a community in your in your town, your neighborhood. It can be really fun and empowering to join a group of like-minded individuals and um, share your passion for your sport. I think sometimes. Um, as others have talked about, that once you kind of get started and you're fit and you're going along, you may not realize, you know, what, what could I do next? Um, I don't really know a lot of other runners. I haven't done any racing. Maybe I'm not sure if I want to race, but I'm, I'm just not really sure what to do. And I don't want to do it by myself. Um, a lot of people, you know, it's great to start running by yourself. I started many, many years ago. And I figured if I started running by myself, I'd always run. And um, I have, but about fi almost five years ago, I thought it would be fun to have a group of individuals to, to share that, that fun with. Um, so if you can find a group in your community and there's almost um, usually connected to um, a running store, maybe a local coffee shop, um, even a, um, a physical therapy place, they, you, know, you can use a lot of connections in your community to find a local group where you can start joining on a regular basis and that will also help you become more consistent runner because you have a set time and place to go. Uh, you're going to help avoid your injuries because um, you're running more consistently. And um, I think it's just it's more enjoyable to do it with, with some friends. You're going to meet new friends. That can branch out into road trips for different races. You can have um, local get-togethers. You can do things for your community. Um, our run club uh, has done, uh, we've collected goods for the local Humane Society, for the local food bank. And we've just really kind of grown. And as a group grows, you become more involved in your community. Um, but I just, I think, really encourage anyone that's interested, welcome to join us. And, and don't be intimidated. I think I, uh, even myself, when I thought about joining a running club, um, I'm not a fast runner. I've just been a runner for a long time. But running, um, the runners are mostly very engaging and welcoming. And they really accept all levels. Uh, most run groups will um, greet newcomers. We definitely assign a greeter every Saturday morning. If I can't be there, I have someone that's greeting. We ask your pace level and then we'll assign you a runner to run with so that you're comfortable and you know where the route is. It just makes it more fun. And then hopefully if you finish at a coffee shop or if it's an evening location or uh, maybe a local pub or a running store sometimes bring in um, treats for the runners, then it just makes it uh, more fun, I think. So um, I just encourage you to look for a local running group. Uh, if you're in this area, Grass Lake Roadrunners, um, we'd love to have you. There's some good groups in Ann Arbor that Nick, I'm sure, will talk about, and then even in uh, the Jackson area. So there's lots of things to choose from. You don't have to run by yourself, and you can make it even more fun. Hi, uh, Nick Stanko from Ann Arbor Running Company. I'm here to talk about uh, equipment, um, primarily shoes, as you get started as a runner. Um, working with somebody at a running store uh, is very important when you're going to get your first pair of real running shoes. Um, there's a lot of options out there. Um, obviously, the internet starting there, looking up things, you'll get a lot of different answers. Uh, but coming into a store that specializes in uh, looking at your foot structure, uh, talking to you, looking at how you move, um, there's going to be some options that are better for you than others. Uh, we, le we like to kind of compare it to uh, eyeglasses. My prescription of eyeglasses is not going to be the same as my best friend's. Um, so I brought a couple options today just to kind of go over a few. Uh, this brand here, Hoka, um, obviously it looks very thick. Obviously it's going to have a lot of cushion. Um, one thing that it does have that I want to talk about real quick is something that's called torsional rigidity. 
sturdy. So this of the shoe, when a shoe is very stiff like this, um, is very good for one type of foot and maybe not so good for another type of foot. Um, so that's something we would talk to you about uh, in the store is showing you kind of the range of shoes that would be good for you. Um, another thing we like to talk about in the, in the store is the shape of the shoe. Um, so you can the, see this shoe here has a different shape than this one here. Um, so everybody's foot's a little different um, in terms of the shape. So you want to find a shoe that kind of matches uh, your shape of your foot. Um, so you'll be more comfortable and that's what you want is you want a shoe to just feel kind of like an extension of your foot um, and that you're walking in it, you're running in it um, and it's just it feels nice. You don't want to feel any weird rubbing or any weird pinching. You definitely don't want the shoe to be too short. Um, so that's something too. We want to measure your foot. We want to give you some measurements. We want to talk to you about the right uh, the right size for you because the shoes are going to run different. Um, and now kind of we have a new category of shoes. Um, some people term them as a super shoe. Uh, so this is when people are getting into more racing, more competitive uh, shoes now. Some shoes have a carbon fiber plate in them or a nylon plate. Um, so it's very stiff in that regard and it bounces back. Uh, so you're getting a nice energy return. So a lot goes into these shoes these days. Uh, you know, 40 years ago, it was kind of like rubber and some, you know, soft fabric on the top. But um, now manufacturers are two, three, four years out on what they're developing. They're putting a lot of research into them. And now there's a lot of options out there. And find the right shoe. It should definitely help you keep healthy as you get into the sport of running. So check out a good running store when you can when you're up for your next shoe. My name is Brian Dahl. I'm a physical therapist for orthopedic rehab at our foot, ankle, and running clinic uh, here in Jackson. Uh, I'm going to talk to us a little bit about what happens um, when you do get injured with running and kind of what does the rehab process look like um, following an injury. Uh, the first thing I want to mention is kind of, you know, typical medical management will look at, you know, if you get hurt while you're running, some doctors will be like, oh, uh, just go ahead and take a few weeks off. You'll be okay. You do that. You feel better. After two to four weeks, you go to start running again only to have the same injury come back. So we like to look at things a little bit different, uh, differently uh, when you're coming in for, for rehab when you're running. We basically we need to figure out, you broke down for a reason, so let's figure out what that is. Um, and first that starts with a little bit with what Brandon was talking about too is, you know, are you fit enough to run or really maybe you're already fit enough but you're bumped up your mileage too quickly. But So we have this um, conversation first to talk about your training, um, talk about what you're doing in terms of cross training, resistance training, stuff like that. See if there's any, um, something obvious that we can, you know, tweak with your training to look at why you broke down and what's gonna help you get better. And then um, the other three things, just like Brandon talked about, we are, we're gonna dive in deeper and looking at your mobility, um, your stability or your strength, and then your power. And so um, I like to break this down, I like you're looking a lot, you know, at the, at the lower chain, but just one, for example, with mobility, um, we gotta be able to get your foot you know, behind you while you're running, and one of the things you need to do that is to have ankle dorsiflexion, or the ability for your ankle to, to bend as you get your foot behind you. So a simple test is to get, you know, about a hand's width away from a wall, um, keep your hips square to, a, uh, to the wall, and as you come forward, can you keep your heel on the ground while you're coming forward? Um, and if you can do that, you should feel, if there's a stretch in the back of your legs, if it's a, a pinch in the front of your ankle, you know, maybe that's a, a bigger conversation to have, but that's just an example of one thing that we'll look at in terms of your mobility. Um, now as we get into your stability or your strength, one thing we would look at is your ability to single leg squat and kind of control that. So with your hands on your hips, can you squat down and keep things in line with your trunk and then your hip, knee, and ankle, everything in a line? Or do you have some weakness that causes you to kind of compensate, come in this way? Are you leaning over this way? Can you not even have your hands on your hips? Are you losing your balance? Um, I like to tell people um, that are runners, like if they can't single leg squat, I like to almost describe running to them as doing doing thousands of single leg squats from one leg to the other at a really rapid pace. And if you can't control it while thinking about it, are you controlling it you know, while you're running? Um, could possibly be lead into a breakdown there. And then finally, um, just like Brandon said, the last thing being power. Um, you need the, that quick, um, 
muscle activation while you're running to be able to forcefully, you know, propel yourself going forward. And if you don't have that, you know, think of it almost like a spring. You need your spring to be very stiff um, so you can absorb energy and then release it very quickly and not a very um, soft spring that, you know, you're absorbing and without being able to um, kind of the elastic rebound effect there. So we'll be able to look at all those kind of things. Um, and then if appropriate, most likely when you're in, as you're getting better, we're, we are gonna look at your running gait. And there's some, some basic things with your form um, that can, you know, that if they're wrong, they're gonna lead to the breakdown. And so we are, we're definitely under the belief that not everyone should run exactly the same and no one is gonna run exactly the same as the next person, but there's some fundamental things that can lead to your optimal way of landing with less load, having less strain on your body, um, which could again potentially be leading to the breakdown. And so um, we look at all those kind of things too. In addition to that, you know, we might, you know, have a conversation about your your diet or your nutrition. Look at things like your sleep, how are you recovering? And so we really do a good job at going in depth um, into figuring out why you broke down in the first place and what we're going to do to um, to help you get better. And our goal is not to make you stop running. Um, we really hate that. We're, our goal is to, you know, maybe back things down for a little bit for the meantime, but ultimately keep you running and then keep you running longer so you can be healthy enough, you know, to get into a, a running group or something like that, whatever you need. So yeah, come see us. Nick, can you just take us through a little bit of kind of when, when somebody's in front of you, what your process is to help them find the right shoe? What, what, I guess, what, what could I expect if you were going to fit me for a shoe? Um, yeah, so when you're coming to a running store and when you're working with somebody uh, that knows what they're doing, uh, they're typically going to have you take your shoes off. Um, they're going to get some measurements uh, in terms of the length of your foot and the width of your foot. They can even have look at the length of your arch. Um, so sometimes your arch length doesn't match up with your foot length and that can make shoes feel weird sometimes. So knowing that if, if you have that discrepancy, um, that can help you navigate uh, when you're trying on shoes um, and then watching you when you uh, are standing and walking and weight bearing um, typically we'll have you walk in the store um, looking at what happens to your arch how much pronation or supination is going on um, for the most part when somebody's walking um, you can see that every now and then uh, when somebody starts running different things starts happening um, so if you're getting injured um, you're struggling with some certain things uh, having somebody look at you while you're running is also good too. Um, doing some single leg squats uh, while, while you're barefoot too can also help us too. Um, and then from there, we like to present you usually with like three, around three options to try on to get started um, based on kind of what's happening with your foot mechanics. Awesome. I think uh, when we first met, Nick, you said about 80% of the shoes are wrong for every person that walks in the door, and then it's just finding that right fit from there, right? Oh, correct. Yep. Yeah. So, like, uh, you know, we carry, we, you know, we carry probably 60, 70 shoes for each gender, and I would say 80% of those shoes are probably not a good match for you, and then there's probably 20% on the wall that are a good match, and you know, that's why we're here to help you navigate that. Awesome. Thank you. Perfect. Let me paraphrase. So the question was, um, what were the numbers when you started the running club and then how have you grown it to where it is now? Um, we started probably with about, uh, I don't know, half dozen or so runners. Um, we had an informational meeting prior to starting the club. We had about 20 people that showed up for that. Actually, Nick from Anna Running Company, we call him our hometown running store, um, was so supportive of um, my ideas and thoughts and, and really kind of used them as an example for a lot of what we were doing. Um, and he told me just to be consistent. Um, I was very excited to start something, excited to see that there was a lot of interest that I think I wanted to have multiple days each week. I, I was just going crazy. And he just said, pick a, pick a time, pick a date and do it every single week and just keep doing it for like years. And I really truly, and I tell other people that want to start stuff, that consistency I think is what made, um, we were a stable 
consistent entity every week. And now we have about 160 people in our club. Um, we have probably over 300 followers on our, our Facebook page. And um, like I'm, I'm going to be volunteering here tomorrow morning, so I'm not there to greet, but I always make sure I assign a greeter. So that if there's anybody new that comes in, they're greeted, they're welcomed into the group, and then like I said, we assign you a, a runner, you know, to, to do the route with. Um, I really think that's the biggest, I really I appreciate that support that um, Nick and his group gave us. Um, and then just being on, you know, grow it through social media, being consistent in your posts, trying to be involved in the community, um, do events like this, and I think then a, a group can continue to grow. Thank and you. How many do you have now? We have about 160 in the, the we have a private page that we, we have to meet you first, um, just for safety purposes, that we want to just make sure that, you know, you're a real person. On Facebook, you can get some, some fake requests, but on the public page, it's, I think we're about 300 followers, so we're excited by that. Awesome, that's great. And I'm, I'm sure the positivity you guys have and the encouragement that you share with everybody doesn't hurt either, yeah, right? Yeah, I know. Sure. So the question was the growth of the orthopedic rehab race series and it's important to our engagement with the community. Um, you know, why, why did we do this? Years and years ago, this our race became available. I, I'm not sure what it was before we took it over, but um, I think this is our 30th year uh, sponsoring this race and kind of organizing it. And it was really born out of the idea of being involved in the community and getting people moving. And so a handful of years ago when the SITPAT was kind of getting out of sponsoring the local race series and we had the opportunity to do it, it just seemed like a natural fit for us to be involved. You know, ultimately being a physical therapy company and believing in promoting health and wellness, being involved in athletic training at a lot of the area schools, the opportunity to, to put on an event, now a series of events, um, that promotes not only some competition, um, but just people getting moving, people being active together, building that community that Don was kind of talking about of um, just, if we have families that do this together. We Every race in our series offers a kids run. We really want this to be an opportunity through multiple generations for people to get moving, to have a lot of fun, and to, to have a good experience doing it, to promote a healthy lifestyle. Um, so the race series has grown over the last handful of years and we're now at 10 races in our series. Um, they start in April and our last race is the Turkey Trot on Thanksgiving Day. Um, so we, we offer a large portion of the year where there's there's events. Most, most months have one, some months have two events in them. Um, but the idea is to promote people being consistently active, to have fun doing it, and then to put on events where we can come together and enjoy that time and 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 make it a lifestyle, make it a community habit. Um, so it's it's been a really great partnership for us, and we're excited to see uh, see it continue to grow and really take off from here. Brian, what would be a situation where I come in and I'm injured, and you do tell me I can't run? Uh, the biggest thing, um, apart from a, a specific, a specific x-ray revealing something would be um, pain near like a, a bony site um, and so so for instance like anywhere in your foot or in your shin you know anywhere where it could be like a stress fracture anything bone related because um, x-ray is not always going to pick up on that right away some people come in like oh my x-ray is negative but you know further down the road we get an MRI and then I was something so I would be more cautious if I'm more suspicious of that um, if it's feeling more of, of the bone rather than a, a musculo tendinous injury um, it's something where we can maybe, uh, you know, dial down the pace, the intensity, work on strengthening and stuff like that would be um, kind of the difference between those two. Well, I'll piggyback on that a little bit. Um, my general rule is 
if your running directly increases all your symptoms, then we might have to take a break. Now, I guess my follow-up to that is, do you have any special equipment at your location that maybe allows you to keep people running or work through those things without causing that inflammation or that injury to kind of get kicked up? A cool device we have is a called the Alter G or anti-gravity treadmill. Um, it's this, this it's a, a your basic treadmill um, on steroids, I guess. But you get um, you it's a way to wear some shorts with a zipper on it, and you get zipped into a bag on a treadmill, and that uh, is gets filled with air, and can we can be anywhere from 20% to up to 100% of your body weight. So you know if the the landing the loading is part of you know the issue, we can unload you, but let's still let you run. Um, as well as kind of look at your mechanics and stuff while you're in there as well. Uh, and then Don, could you just speak to, you know, kind of what it feels like to come in the door and what the process is if you do have an injury? I'd be happy to. Um, I love this group, this company. Um, I really feel I'm running healthy because of um, their work with me. Um, I came to them just as a, um, I saw them at a race at Clark Lake and I, um, I had an Achilles issue. Um, I ran the race and then afterwards uh, I talked to someone and uh, they said, just call and get a, you can get a free consultation. I actually met Brandon there gave me some exercise to do and actually helped the situation. So then I had a knee issue um, and I had not really had any problems prior to that. And um, got that corrected and then started working with um, Nick and their performance training um, department. And that really was addressing, they kind of felt that um, by my evaluation that my gait needed to be um, worked on and that that was probably causing some of my issues. So um, I spent um, several weeks in that program and I think what I liked the most, one, I loved the fact that, you know, it wasn't just, no, you can't run. It was like, how are we going to get you to run through this and kind of actively heal myself is how I kind of looked at it. But they also just were the, the focus and the attention. From when I walked in the door, I, I came in one day and I really thought I wasn't limping, but um, Nick immediately said, you know, how come you're limping and get on the table? And I thought, gosh, are you, do you watch me the minute I walk in there? He goes, from the minute you walk in to the minute you leave. And I think I just really felt that I'd been through some other physical therapy locations, different companies, and I never felt that level of commitment and really the commitment to listen to what I wanted to do with my running. Um, I've been running for many years and um, I'm not a fast runner, but they just took me very seriously and they knew that I wanted to be the best that I could be. Um, and I was just telling Brandon, I did the Ragnar Relay, which is something which I ran three times within 24 hours, um, had no problems whatsoever. I had a great time. I had shoes from Nick, uh, some new Brooks shoes that I just absolutely love. So th this is a good group of people to get to know and we are pretty blessed in this community to have this level of um, professionalism and knowledge that uh, you really need to take advantage of. If you have any issue whatsoever, you need to contact these people. Same with shoes and a running company, orthopedic rehab specialists, um, because they will keep you running. You know, it's really awesome to get to work with people that are motivated, that take it seriously, and are committed to getting better and doing thing, doing the things they need to to do that. That makes the job a lot easier and uh, leads to good success stories. The question is, uh, I, I, how do you know when you need a new pair of running shoes? How do you know when it's time to, to get a new one? Uh, most brands will say there's probably like three to four hundred miles of life in a shoe so obviously one way to do that is to keep track um, some people write down you know whether it's a date or whatever they got their shoes um, some people can just kind of make a, an educated guess I run you know 15 miles a week and then kind of do the math and my next pair of shoes might be due in December uh, some people go by aches and pains when they start getting aches and pains maybe they shouldn't 
right? Uh, usually it's not a, oh, it's my shoes. Usually they try to work through it and think it's something else, but a lot of times just getting a fresh pair of shoes. Um, another thing to kind of look at is um, the blown rubber on the bottom of a shoe. Um, the areas here is that they're actually made to last longer than the midsole. So when you see significant kind of smoothing out on the bottom, typically the support and the cushioning that you had and should have is gone by that point. Um, so just kind of keep an eye on the bottom of the shoe. Um, if you can keep track of it a little bit um, and kind of be a little more proactive um, than reactive when you know replacing your shoes. Um, another good option too, as people get more into it, uh, they might have a couple pairs of shoes, so they're rotating shoes. Um, so uh, somebody might uh, have a shoe and and then um, they have a they have a second shoe and they're kind of alternating, so they're never running in a in a dead shoe. Um, that can help with injuries too. Absolutely, and that that is the difference of somebody that works with this and 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 knows the technology and the changes and is kind of a, a ahead of that curve. I guess that does lead me to to a question: is how quickly does it change the technology? Uh, it seems to it seems to go in waves, um, kind of you know like brands are doing the same thing, kind of, and you know they're all watching each other, and then one brand will like take a huge leap, and then all the other brands have to like catch up. Uh, so like Nike when they came out with their next percent shoe and that technology, you know they were like a few steps ahead of everybody, and then now everybody's scrambling to kind of catch up. Or another brand like Hoka Maximal Cushion, um, you know everybody thought it was a fad at first and kind of just let it let it be but you'll see a lot of shoes kind of coming up here that'll have like thicker midsoles and now the foam's getting um, lighter too so they can have thicker midsoles um, without having a heavy shoe uh, so it see again it seems to go in waves and uh, I'd say every few years you know new technology kind of is popping up and it's probably increasing now too with technology thank you all right, well, I want to thank all of you guys for joining me tonight. Uh, I know that uh, everybody's really busy and, and taking the time out to do something like this and put information out for people and just ultimately that's what we all want to do is see you all be successful, see people run healthy and uh, enjoy doing it and stay active. So thank you for uh, joining us and thank you guys. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Well, thank you.